Okay, hi everybody. Welcome to our very first DNA design tutorial. Today, I am gonna be showing you how to create your very first bio brick. We are gonna find a DNA sequence uh, coding for an enzyme from a public DNA database. We're going to code on optimize that sequence and then we're going to clone it into a standard biobrick vector using standard biobrick restriction sites. So this tutorial should be useful for anyone who's starting out on an iGEM team, anyone who's interested in iGEM, or just anyone who's interested in DNA sequences, how they work, and how to clone them. So let's get started. Okay. So you can see here, I've opened up Genius. Genius is the DNA sequence editing software that I'm gonna be using for this tutorial. Uh, if you're on an iGEM team, you'll have access to a free Genius license for the summer. Uh, if you're not on an iGEM team, there is similar uh, DNA sequence editing software out there uh, for free that you can find. So here's Genius. I've created a folder for us called My First BioBrick, and, but so far there's nothing in there. So if we're gonna clone uh, a DNA sequence in silico, the first thing that we need to do is find a DNA sequence. So I will go ahead and fire up a web browser here, navigate over to GenBank, and I will do a GenBank nucleotide search uh, for the sequence of an enzyme that's interesting to me. Uh, and in this case, today what I'm interested in is a gene that from a bacteria called Corynobacterium striatum, called AGAA. And here it is. Let's take a look at the GenBank record. So this is an enzyme uh, that is involved in the formation of human body odor. And it's, uh, it's something that my students have been studying this summer. It's something that's interesting to me. Feel free to substitute the coding sequence of the enzyme of your choice. And so here's the GenBank record, and it looks good. I see the amino acid sequence here, and then scrolling down a little bit, I can see the DNA sequence. All right, so let's grab this. I'll navigate back up to the top, go to the send menu. I'll ask for the complete record in GenBank format. So the GenBank format is the most universal format for sharing annotated DNA sequences, and it's something that's gonna be readable by whatever DNA sequencing editor uh, software that you happen to be working with. Here is my GenBank format file, and so I will drag and drop that over into Genius, and let's take a look. Right. So I'll just zoom in here. So I see the ATG start codon at the beginning of my DNA sequence, and I see the TGA stop codon at the end. So that looks like a coding sequence to me. Uh, so let's work with it. All right. So. The next thing that we're gonna wanna do, now that we have a DNA sequence, is we're gonna wanna codon optimize it. So codon optimization is uh, something that's in general, it's very useful to do whenever you're expressing an enzyme uh, in E. coli that doesn't come from E. coli, right? So in, uh, today our enzyme comes from Corynobacterium. Codon optimization does uh, a few important things. One thing it does is it balances the GC content um, of your DNA, which is gonna make it easier to work with in the lab. Uh, another thing it does is it selects uh, codons that work more efficiently in the bacteria of your choice, this KC E. coli, so that your gene will express more efficiently. Uh, and the last thing it, it does is eliminate common uh, restriction sites from your DNA sequence. And again, that's gonna make your DNA uh, much easier to work with in the lab. Okay, so codon optimization. Let's go find a codon optimization tool. Uh, today, I'm gonna use one called JCAT. This is a free tool, it's available over the web. And here it is, JCAT, a novel tool to adapt codon usage. And so I'll go ahead over to Genius, select my DNA sequence and copy it.
paste it into JCAT. This is a DNA sequence. We are going to express this DNA sequence in E. coli strain K12. And I am going to ask JCAT to avoid uh, the standard biobrick restriction sites so that we can use them later on when we want to clone the gene. So the standard biobrick restriction sites are ECOR1, XBA1, PST1, and SPE1. So I'm going to ask JCAT to eliminate all of those uh, restriction sites from the codon optimized sequence. All right, and I'll hit submit. And here it is, here's my codon optimized DNA sequence. So now I've got my codon optimized DNA sequence and I am gonna go ahead and select that sequence. Copy it. Go over to Genius. And create a new DNA sequence. paste it in. Uh, so this will be a nucleotide sequence. And I'm going to name this AGAA from C striatum. And I'm going to add in the description field that this sequence has been codon optimized by JCAT. And there it is, brand new codon optimized DNA sequence. Good to go. Okay, so now we've codon optimized our coding sequence. Uh, the next thing we need is a vector to clone it into. So for the purposes of this tutorial, we're gonna use the standard BioBrick cloning vector PSB1C3. Okay, so I'll go ahead and open up a web browser here again. And I'm pretty sure PSB1C3 is famous enough that if I just Google search for it, it will come up. And sure enough, here it is, listed in the iGEM parts registry. So we can see all the documentation that the iGEM registry provides for the PSB1C3 vector. Uh, and what we want to do is go ahead and download this vector in the GenBank format. So the way we do that is we go up to the Part Tools menu, GenBank format, download, and we'll go ahead and drag and drop that file into Genius. And there it is, PSB1C3. Go ahead and take a look. This is a circular sequence because it is a plasmid. Beautiful, beautiful, a perfect biobrick cloning vector. Okay, so how are we going to get our DNA sequence into this cloning vector? The answer is standard biobrick restriction sites. Every biobrick is cloned with ECOR1 and XBA1 at the 5' prime end and SPE1 and PST1 at the 3' prime end. So to clone our gene into the biobrick vector, we need to add those cloning sites to our DNA sequence. So let's go and get those cloning sites now. Uh, we'll find them in a web browser and I'll search for biobrick, prefix, and suffix. There it is. And here we've got all the information that we want on how to clone using the standard biobrick prefix and suffix. 
and the exact DNA sequences. So I will go ahead and select this one here. Let's see if the following part is a coding sequence or any other part that starts ATG, the biobrick prefix is. Okay, so that's our part. So let's go ahead and copy that sequence. Take it into our DNA sequence file. Paste. Yeah, we'll allow editing for this. All right, looks good. And now we'll do the same thing for the suffix. Paste that at the end of our DNA sequence. All right, looks good. We'll go ahead and hit save. And that's it. Our DNA sequences are designed and ready to clone. So let's go ahead and clone them in silico. I will start by selecting the PSB1C3 vector. Go ahead and go to the cloning menu and say digest into fragments. We will digest this vector with the standard biobrick cloning enzymes XBA1 and PST1. All right, looks good. So here we have our digested fragments. I'll go ahead and delete the small fragment since we're not going to be using that. And then I will similarly digest uh, our new construct, our AGAA enzyme coding sequence. XBA1. And PST1. All right, looks good. Uh, just like before, I'm going to go ahead and delete the these small DNA fragments. We're not going to use those. And now for the final step, uh, the ligation. So we'll ligate our new DNA sequence into the vector backbone and that's going to prepare a, a complete cloning vector that is ready to be introduced into E. coli and propagate our gene. So I'll take our two sequences, go to the cloning menu, ligate, the software recognizes the compatible uh, enzyme overhangs. And there we have it, our ligated sequences. It is the PSB1C3 vector carrying the AGAA coding sequence. So this is something that is ready to submit to the Biobrick registry, ready to use in your, in your downstream uh, applications, whatever your genetic dreams might be. Okay, so thanks for being with us in this first DNA design tutorial. Uh, we moved pretty fast today, so don't worry if you didn't quite follow everything. We'll make all the DNA sequences that we used uh, during the tutorial available to you so that you can play with them on your own time uh, and hopefully use a little bit of what we learned today to design your own DNA sequences. Happy cloning!